first person. Huh. You can be me, you can beat me to the 19th hole. The 19th hole. You can be me, you can beat me to the 19th hole. The 19th hole. I'm at the 19th hole, fellowshipping with a few folks. My game was on, so I wanna buy a few strokes. I shot 80, can't get lower. Yeah, shot 80, Puerto Rico. Man, can't get lower. Man, let's go. Listen, let's go. I shot, what did I shoot? I shot a 40 on the front. I thought I was a man. One bogey, birdie. I'm thinking I'm the hottest thing. Yeah, one straight pause. <laughs> I get to the back. First drive. Oh, you feel me? Oh, this is fine. Oh, let's get started up, man. Let's get around. I'm like, I'm like damn. First yeah. drive, yeah. Back nine. I'm like, okay, there it no, is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Well, since there it is, man, we back after the round. You didn't, you haven't played today, have you? No, it was, I mean, it's still hurting. No, I'm chilling today. I'm chilling. I got two, two back to back good ones. I know. Week. We at the 19th home, man. I'm your host, Warren Hardy. This is my partner in crime, the golfer bro himself, Jay Reed, Monsoon Reed. Got the homie today. Yes, sir. E. E. Yes, sir. Eric Ebron, starting tight end, Pittsburgh Steelers, man. I freak up. I got to put some respect on your name. Jeff Lee. Kobo, mm -hmm. tight end mm -hmm. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. How you doing, man? I'm great, bro. I'm great. Appreciate the much love. <laughs> Appreciate the much love. <laughs> much love. Appreciate it. For sure, for sure. Man, so you, uh, I just want to kick things off, man. Let people know a little bit about you. From North Carolina, played ball. Yeah. Went to school at North Carolina, yeah. True Tar Heel. Yeah. Then drafted first round by Detroit. Yeah. Yep. So, quick question: Was it just a thing growing up for you? Like you from North Carolina, just, right? Was so, just going to be a Tar Heel. Was that so, like the dream? So, so, shine a little light. I'm originally born and raised in New Jersey. Jersey. Okay. Okay. Jersey. So, I'm up north, up north. Um, I got two older brothers, so I'm the youngest. And when they moved out, my mom moved me to North Carolina. Just me, just me and her. So it was kind of like to just build like this dream up on to start new mm -hmm. because being in New Jersey didn't do much for us. So it was like a fresh start for both of us. And she was like, well, I want you to, you know, do something with yourself, be something with yourself. You know what I'm saying? So what do you want to do? Now, mind you, when I was in New Jersey, football is not like the thing to play. It's basketball. You a hooper if you're in New Jersey, New York area. Um, but I had played on a few teams with my cousins and stuff, and I had enjoyed the game of football, but I never really played it to where, you know, you had to play it. So when she moved me to North Carolina, um, that's kind of when I got into football more. And I didn't get into that until my junior year high school. So I didn't really start playing it. That's still basketball football. country, too, right? It's still basketball country, too. But football is... It's more of a thing. It's not like Texas football. Like right. this, this high school football is a, another, you know, universe. But our football was still big. It was big enough to where, you know, we could sell out events. People would come. It was the thing to do. Now, you know, we can shut down the city like Texas, but we did football right in a in a in a popping way. Right. Um. So yeah. So I started. Playing my, my junior year of high school and uh, things just took off. Scholarship after scholarship. Did um, you play both sides of the ball? I played both sides of the ball. Yeah, I was dominating. Deep I had scholarships. Wait, so is this stat true? You had 10 touchdowns on offense and 13 and a half sacks. Yep. On defense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So they wanted me to play either defensive end or tight end, but it's something about all right. So this is my this was my theory when I was thinking about it and deciding where I wanted to go to college and what I wanted to do. It was like okay, you can play defense again. Mind you, I wasn't looking at what 
you know, uh, what what friggin' uh, Michael Strahan was making mm-hmm. playing defensive end in the NFL. I wasn't looking at, you know, what Jason Taylor was making playing defensive end in the NFL versus what Jeremy Shockey and the boys was making at that time playing tight end. I didn't look at numbers. I looked at what gave me the more satisfaction in sport because it's what I love to do. I never knew nothing about salaries and stuff like that. I just wanted to play the game based off what I like. And scoring touchdowns was so much more. It, it, it changes the dynamic of everything. So yeah. I, I couldn't get over that. I couldn't get over that. Right. So that's what made me choose wow. tight end over anything. Yeah. Now being an NC, did you, did you know, you say you were getting all these scholarship offers from various schools. Was it like you just knew you wanted to be a target? Or was it you like... You knew you wanted to be a target. It's, gotcha. it's, when you're there, that, that... Like we were talking about our golf trip. If we yeah. end up going to Charlotte or North Carolina for the golf trip next year, you will see everybody in Carolina Blue. Everything's going to be Carolina Blue. It's kind of like it's supposed to be. Because then you look at the sky, and I'm saying as well, guy got to be a target because right. Right? look at the sky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's culture, bro. It's yeah. so deeply embedded. And That's you only it. feel it. You will know it when you're in Carolina. It's fun. We're going to take a quick pause real quick. Jay Reed, what are we smoking today? Oh, so uh, today we're smoking the Placencia Arma del Campo. It's uh, about Placencia. Placencia is a, man, they, they probably one of the top factories, you know, in the world, man. They make a lot of cigars. And we're just thinking that they start making some of their own cigars. But this right here is all Nicaraguan medium body, so it's a pretty good breakfast cigar. Maybe something we need to come to lunch. But uh, we'll see what's going on. It's a little heavier than what I'm just smoking for breakfast. Uh, I really like it. It's, it's, like I'm, a, I'm a bit of a, I'm a like bit of a heavy side smoke on his cigars, man. Um, so something light like this with a little bit of flavor, yep, yep, cool yep, cool. I'm you on that. That's a very good social cigar, yeah. and that's what I, that's that's all I'm talking about. Okay, help you help me. No, yeah, it's good. I love people. Always, I, I haven't smoked a bad one yet. Great company, man. Yeah. So jumping back on it. Uh, Switching gears for a second, yep. we are in the 19th home, right? Yep, yep. When did you pick up the game of golf? Yo, so I was at uh, I was at my boy Golden Tate's wedding. I was at Golden Tate's wedding. It was Golden Tate, Reggie Bush, my dog Andre Roberts, and a couple other cats. I can't remember. And I mean, these dudes lining up, and I'm just hanging out with the with the gang essentially. We were all teammates, so I'm just hanging out with the homies, and they're they're from Detroit. So um, I'm just hanging out with the homies, you know, I'm at the wedding, I'm just enjoying myself, I don't want to be at the hotel, because I don't know how to golf, but I just want to hang out with the the boys. So um, they at the golf range, man, they talking all this, you know, all these logistics and stuff, I have no (laughs) idea what these boys talk about. You know, oh, what about this? Oh, yeah, this degree on this. Yeah, man, I use this. I'm like, okay, this. I'm gonna go over here and see what they got for breakfast. Like that's how I'm down. Nobody wants to be out here talking all this mess. But I'm seeing these boys crank this golf ball from this little old club, man. And I'm like, how? Oh. You know, it can't be that hard. You know, <laughs> you gotta. How hard could it be to hit that golf ball? And that's, I feel like that's essentially what everyone says, right? Everybody. How hard can it be yeah. to hit that golf ball? So. I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm flying around the drone, or the drone. I'm trying to get good content for the boys. It's my dog waiting, so I'm, I'm mm-hmm. trying to, you know, be be the guy. Play so yeah, yeah, just yeah. trying to play my role. And uh, we get a lineup to one par three, and I, in my, in my two two out of three of them on the green, maybe one of them was short. And they like, man, hit the hit, hit the ball. You see if you can get it over there. They give me the iron, they hit because I, you know, I don't know distances or nothing that. So I'm just lining it up, you know, lining it up, but I crank that golf. Mm. Lands right up to the green. They go, what? hold the hell on. How you just do that? And I was like, I'm, I'm a natural athlete. Like, this is what, like, it's always been like that for me, you know? So, I, I didn't hit, <laughs> I didn't hit nothing, nothing else, nothing else since then. Um, so, what, so, how long ago was that? This was, I want to say this was, when did 2014, my 2015? Golden Gear. I want to say this was three years ago. Three years ago. So, three years three, ago. Three years ago. As my dog, Golden Gear. Wow. Three, three, maybe four years ago, maybe. Um, so that was my only time hitting a golf club. I, I still didn't play golf since then. So that was like my first time just hitting the ball with him. 
I still didn't play golf. So then I meet up with him again. I stay at uh, Golden Tate's house. Golden stays on the golf course in San Diego. Oh, and I'm with Andre again. And they golfing, golfing. So I'm like, man, I'm going to play something with y'all. This was about, I want to say this was about two years ago. So I'm playing. So then I just got booked. And I was just like, right, I'm going to get my own That's club. It. That's it. I'm going to try this out. That's so I get to Indianapolis. So Indy, it's about, yeah, about three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I get to Indy. Everybody golfing in any flat land. Yeah. Ain't nothing to do but play golf. So I'm like, I'm about to get into this. So I can find this dude and he start tailoring me out. So we start swinging club at the club. I go to sleep day after day. We start swinging club at the club. I start figuring out which one works best for me. I start off with the Callaway Rose. You did it right. Fat face. You know, you I can't right. ball. Right. Can't so then, then, right. then yeah. it went to the Cobras with a little skinnier face. And now it's the PhD with the pro face. And it's like, Okay, I'm down and then the only thing I need now is my driver. And once once I get my driver, I feel like my, my bag gonna be good. So your whole bag right now is PhD. My whole bag is PhD. driver. Everything. Even the driver right now. Even the driver right now. But you say cutter, you driver, wedges, PhD. You want those with the sims, right? Yeah, I got I need my tailor made. I need my tailor. I love the way it look. I love the way it feel, I love the way it sound. It's like you can't replicate that. You know what I'm saying? PhD, I love PhD. Taylor May, come on, man. Taylor May, what y'all doing? I'm picking my game up. Man, I ordered my club February 21st. They seen my tweet. I know they saw my tweet. <laughs> I know they saw my tweet. I ordered my club February 21st. I said, driver, bro, I just want to be able to drive the ball before I got to go back to work. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> man. Like, so I, I can't say nothing bad about Taylor May. I was a Taylor May fan. I said this on one of the episodes. I started out with Nikes when they, when they had the slingshots. Oh, sling, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I went Taylor made because I was like you. Yeah. yeah. Look. Yeah. The feel. Oh yeah. I mean, I ran through three sets of Taylor made. Oh yeah. You know, full sets. Man, I've been playing about twenty years. I didn't get them all except PSG. That's all I'm saying. I had PSG. But Callaway is my favorite. Okay. Callaway, but Mizuno irons. I like Callaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm playing Mizuno iron. Playing, Everybody do. Yeah. I'm playing ping irons. Oh, ping they're wood, nice. And I got Titleist. Blackout. Blackout irons. I love it. Yeah. They got the weight the toe. Yeah. Man, I'd be crying. So look here. Tell me this. You say you love the feeling of scoring touchdown. Which is better? Touchdown, birdie, or the three hundred yards? That's a good question. I think very good. I don't think it depends. I don't think it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. So it depends. It depends on the help you. I got you. I'm help you. Take out the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take out, no, no audience, nothing. It's just the feelings. Yeah. We're going to base off feelings. Yeah, based on feelings. Women say we don't talk about our feelings enough. Wait, right, for sure, for sure. Hey, look, so I saw this thing on Instagram. Uh, woman and a dude, I'm going to get back to the question. I know it was woman and a dude seeing a psych, uh, psychiatrist, psych, psych, whatever, the, whatever, yeah. the, whatever yeah. they do, psychologist, yeah. whatever they do to, to help benefit their relationship, uh, a helper. Um, and she was uh, describing her husband in the ways that he was. And the uh, lady was mm-hmm. describing to him in golf terms. And he was like, oh, honey, that's how you're feeling? I didn't know that. And at the end of it, it was like, well, you need to, you need to learn how to communicate. And the wife's like, see, I told you. She's like, no, you. <laughs> and he was talking about in golf terms. She needed to understand golf so that she could make her happy. It was so funny. Oh, I guess. But anyway, so. It depends on the difficulty of the birdie. Mm. It depends on the difficulty mm. of the birdie or the difficulty of the 300 yard drop. Mm. Because scoring touchdowns is always difficult. It's the hardest thing to do in the NFL is to score touchdowns. So, you it made it look so easy? Man, it's so hard. <laughs> it is so hard. It's easy to make it look as many as, of, as, many of them as I have. It's still the hardest thing because right. the defense's sole job from the moment they step on the field is to prevent you from getting in there. Yeah, period. So, period, right. So, if you can disrupt that goal, and that's goal number one on all teams, right. you've already you've yeah. already messed up, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 But look up. Right. Your homeboy could have just hit the drive of his life, stuck that thing two feet, and you could chip it in, and for birdie, and he hit oh, birdie, and oh. your birdie is that much more 
exhilarating to his birdie is. And you, you know what I'm saying? See, I didn't so think about that. that what what, kind, yeah. of what yeah. kind of birdie is it? You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. What kind of 300 yard drive yeah. is it? Yeah. Because it could be a straight, it could be, you know, a, the straightest fairway looking at trees right and left, and you crank that thing 300 yards pure, and you like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. can't nobody say nothing. You right. know what I'm saying? Because right. somebody got to cut, somebody, somebody got to draw. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But scoring a touchdown, Hey, there's nothing better, man. You score a touchdown, crowd still screaming for the next ten minutes. I say, take the you crowd. sit there, <laughs> you sit there, you sit there. Your homies dapping you up. You the man. You just, you did your ultimate job, yeah, yeah, and yeah. your ultimate job is to help your team win the game. Love and it. if you score a touchdown, you did your job. Love and that thing a lot. So there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing better. Yeah. That Pittsburgh atmosphere. So and it's oh man, it's crazy. Playing with the tiles and everything. Yeah. Now, I asked you about a birdie after I played one of these pro AMs in a couple of years. And now, birdie that thing. Right that on. might not be. We're going to come back to the next one. So, you see yourself? Oh, yeah. Would that, would that be a goal? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I shoot, them, I shoot about the mid 80s now. I've only been playing truly tailoring my golf game and truly understanding golf for a year and a half. Wow. Developing a swing. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I'm hating. I'm, I'm hating. <laughs> I did, I'll tell you too, man. I've been, I've been playing for a minute. Yeah, but I'm gonna be real with you because we, we ask, we, we ask tough questions. We say the real stuff on this show. True. You don't put in the work that they put in. I don't. You just like the fame. <laughs> you won't put in the work. Yeah. Yeah. He went to got fitted. Yeah. Listen about all the yeah. different irons. You I see, see something pretty, you buy it, you go get it. You look at clean on the course, you can be hurt. You don't even care. You still playing. Here with Phil, real talk though. Y'all boys put in some work. Y'all put in some work. I, I said the same thing. I said the same thing. That's some athletes, man. That's some pro athletes. They, 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 to they, me, they can't perform down there. Yeah, y'all, yeah. Are, y'all are training. One, training 24-7. You got, you got time to go play. Yeah. yeah. You be real with that, too. Yeah. And then you, you want that. The time is important. The time is important. And you want that expectation yeah. of, of playing at a high level. Yeah. Like, even when we went to, uh, we had a chance to come to feet. Uh, you know, we go this year. Go Phoenix, Phoenix, right. Right. Phoenix this year. He came out there. He said you had a great time. It was a great time. The boys, was, we were live. Yeah, we were, yeah. But was like when that. you around your boys, you want to perform. Oh, good. absolutely. I don't care if we hoop it on the black top yeah. in the back. That's yard. why I have to have Mark on the show because I want him and you to discuss all the betting that y'all be doing. Oh, me and Mark are betting. But every bet going to one dollar bet. They went up to find his last. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That was really good. <laughs> so he knows. So he, he we played with him one day. We got to a part three. I think me and my cousin AJ or somebody was like, "Man, what y'all want to do?" And he turned around. He's about to tee off. He was first. He was like, "Oh, we normally do a hundred the hole." He said, "I'm looking like I'm gonna chill today. <laughs> <laughs> I might just stick this one, but I don't think I'll stick to this one." <laughs> I would just, I think we end up doing, I don't know, 15 or 20 that day or something like that. But we end up pushing all four of them. Right, everybody's broken. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so back to that performing at a high level. So when you, you know, like you say, you play, you're, you're currently playing ball. Mm-hmm. So you, you have to stay in tip top shape. Yeah. Like you can't slack off mm-hmm. in the off season, right? Do you, do you have golf in mind when you're training? Oh. Like as a, like as a combination? Well, when, no. Um, I train for what makes me money. So at the end of the day, if my back is tight, but my golf swing sucks, whatever, you know. Yeah. Um. So, no, nah, I mean, but I do know, you know, in due time, and as I continue to learn this game, I'm only 28. You know, I'm not like I'm trying to go pro and I can play golf until I'm 50. So I got time to. I really got a time to yeah. do pro ams to do. Those things, so uh, yeah, I believe I'm really gonna try to push go. And I told G for this too, because I got to tell you, those my people, I'm gonna be fully endorsed by them, hopefully, and really play golf like, really, really play golf. And you know, I have a bunch of different investments, and me and my wife share a bunch of you know, different things, and I have a great, you know, uh, understanding of what my life would be like I was after football. You know but I mean? if, if golf is if golf is there. I'm walking that. I'm walking that road. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's wow. so much fun. The amount of people you meet, the camaraderie, the the, the man. You you can't you can't get that nowhere else. And then you come home 
that much more happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because as a man, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be in the clubs. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to be here. You hang out cigar bars with right. the fellas. You want to do things with the fellas that's going to keep you out of trouble. And I feel like golf is one of those things that's, my wife be getting mad all she wants about me being on a golf course, but she know I'm not doing nothing wrong. I might not be, you know, at, at the house. And at the same time, I said I might get there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm, I'm just with the fellas, and I'm mm-hmm. playing golf. Spin you know? facts. Spin so facts. it's nothing. It like I feel like I feel like it's the it's the it's the best male like way of having peace. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And clearing my. I've always said again. We speak on this at the 19th home, right? I think you want to be around you want to be around people that's in your same demographic, whether it be uh, socioeconomic demographic right. or just demographic in life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Most of us are of a certain age. You know, if you look at young, you say you're 28. Yeah. But still, you've, you've, you've put yourself in a position socioeconomically where you want to do some of the same things that people your age are doing. Playing golf, they're smoking cigars, they're doing investments. You got you got two boys at the house, you're married, right? So you want to be in line with some with of the same group. things exactly. with that group, it's right? On. Right? Yeah. I love. I'm one of the younger ones here at Stokes, yeah. but I sit back and I listen to these guys. I listen to the stories they tell. I listen to some of the mistakes that they made early on in life, and I just I sit back and listen and I ask questions, and I just I just learn. And even we get we're at the golf course, you know. Point before we go out there, sure. let's be real. Everybody ain't gone. For sure. sure. For sure. You can't, some people can't do the can't afford 60, 75, three, four times. Uh, right. uh, exactly. And if you plan like that too, right? Yeah. The memberships that come along with it. Right. So you kind of want to align yourself with that group of people if you're able to. And you're right. It keeps you out of trouble. I, I've had no issues saying, hey, I'm going to go smoke a cigar or I'm going to play golf with my boys. Because at the end of the day, you know what yet? Exactly. <laughs> so right on. I think that's good. So back to uh, my next question. We were talking about it earlier today. What's some of the what's some of the, the best courses you played and how have yeah. you played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, man, I wish I could remember the one I played in California with uh the gold that one time. I can't remember it's like San Diego? It was in San Diego. I can't remember the name of it. It was, it was a sick course, but this was before I was good. Uh, say Mission Hills. Nah, I, I'll find. I'll find out. Don't but say. Don't say Tory Pines. Wasn't it? Wasn't Tory Pines? <laughs> uh huh. Man, I can't remember. But that was one of one great course. But I wasn't good enough yet um, to really like truly enjoy the course. So since I've been good at golf, and some of the best courses I've played, like I just said, like I just got back. From Quail Hollow, this will be my second time playing Quail. And first time Quail destroyed me. Second time, walked up to the first tee box, and that was 320 right down the middle. Oh. First drop. Hey. Landed in Riachi. Both. Let me tell you why. Fastest greens I ever seen in my life. Okay. Bro, if you was above the pen, you could kiss that thing. Good Come on. Come on. And you could tap it, like tap. And it would roll. And I'm like, Okay, so I be seeing these dudes on tour take that thing all the way back and uh, and I'll be like, how 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 did yeah. how do they do that? Because I can't even pull mine back a so little right. bit before that thing go flying that quill. You have a you have a mallet or you have a oh I'm blade. blade. Oh I'm blade all the way. No, I can't do that big bag, heavy bag shit. I just need something simple to keep me keep me nice and right. But well, um, no mallet. But uh so Quill was Quail was crazy, but look, I took advantage of Quail this time. Shot in the low night, which is very respectful for Quail. If you if you have it, if you don't play Quail or these PGA courses like this, ninety is is good to do. Absolutely. Um, Birdie seventeen, which is one of the hardest par threes yeah. out there. Um, I had my I had my caddy like dog. I don't know how the hell you just did that. That's, he was like, "There's some pros that can't." Ball stop right now, like chill, but chill. Oh, yes, you know, like this. Oh, yes, you know, like this. Right. Uh, almost got my first hole in one at Quail. Ball went wow. inside the hole and out. Seven iron from, I think it's a uh, par, I, it's a par three. Uh, I think it's number four or five. The 
the tee box sit there and the green is a little bit lower. Uh, dude, my caddy was like, I was about to hit a six iron. He was like, <laughs> got no wind. The way you're hitting that thing right now, seven. I'm like, seven? He goes, seven. I'm like, seven. He looked at me, he goes, seven. I'm like, all right, he take off. I hit the ball. He went like this. He's watching the ball go into the hole. Buku, it jumps out. Come on, man. Hard. Couldn't, couldn't but. I still couldn't get the green down by then. Hard. Come on, man. Oh, That's still amazing, almost, though. Almost had my first hole when that quail wow. and I was, I would have jumped into somebody's water. <laughs> and quail, I would have jumped into somebody's water. They would have gave me a whole new outfit. There my people over there. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> your whole new outfit. They gave me a whole new outfit. <laughs> Uh, that was one of my top places, man. And I just played Laurel Valley in Pennsylvania. Laurel Valley is literally in a valley. And if you look around, it's like the most beautiful thing you could you right. see. And I just, man, greens was just as fast um, as quail. And I, it took advantage of my first time playing. I was driving the heck out the ball. I just could not get those pin placements and like your first time playing, you oh, were like, man, absolutely. I hit that thing. I'll be on all part threes, but the green was like, damn, if I would have aimed just a little bit more left, or if I would have did just a little bit more of this, you know, I would have had this putt that go up this way because that's yeah. like you're in a valley. So all the yeah. greens are like sloping, going great in their fastest. Hey, so I was like, this this golf course guy, I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. But that one took advantage of me. And, um, like I say, here in Houston, Carlton Woods, which I I just became a member at, is probably one of my favorite golf courses um, I've ever played because it gives you two just beautiful courses, man. Two very challenging, very good, fun courses. And then Blue Jack. Blue Jack is another one of my favorite courses because it's the grass, your ball is always findable. <laughs> with, that, with that good sword that they got out there. And you, it's it's difficult enough where you can't you can't you can't suck suck, but it's easy enough where you can suck a little bit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And yeah, still have yeah. fun and right. still play. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can't go out there and just think you just go hit your ball and be able to find it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you miss a little right, right. yeah, all right. Yeah. You know you gonna have a <laughs> it ain't clear degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Facts. Facts. <laughs> Facts. It ain't, it ain't that. Or Quail Valley. <laughs> Quail Valley will let you find your ball. Yeah. Uh, so. And when I lived up there, uh, I was a member of Kingwood. Okay. I'm surprised. Yeah, I played Kingwood. I have played Kingwood. It's like seven courses over there. It's like three. Five courses. Five. Oh, oh, five. Oh, oh. Five. It's five different courses. Yeah. It's, five, it's five completely different courses. Mm. And they're going to make you, you have to play each one of them. You have to respect them individually. Absolutely. Like one of them. Uh, the island course, you better be you better be able to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> you better be able to drive them off. It, it, it's, it's big dog. Yeah. You better be able yeah. to drive them yeah. off. Uh, if your ball goes off that first cut, it's, it's hell coming out. It's thick. Uh, then they got the uh, then they got the marsh course. The marsh is going to put your course management to the test. Because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I need to be able to get it here. That I could have a good approach shot. Right, right yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's cut like that to where you, you yeah, have to. Any other to compare it to uh, what's going out in the uh, wilderness? Yeah, wilderness. I would say they have one called the Forest. Okay. It's yeah, probably, that's the one we play. The Forest is probably somewhat, it's not as, it's not as wide as the wilderness. Yeah. In the wilderness, they have some holes out there you have to bring your drive. Right. Forest here is narrow, so if you got a good three wood, he played it. It's, you gotta you gotta be able to put it down there. Mm. And then last, they got I mean, it's it's nice and for the, for the price for five courses, anytime, man, you can't be cut. You can't. And then I move to this side of town. Mm -hmm. There's no way I'm driving the key wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the key? Can't go out. No, no, no. So what would you say the, the, the part of your game you feel like you need to work on right now? If I could consistently drive the ball, because I just I feel like I just I just got really good at my chipping. 
So yesterday my driver sucked, but what saved me was my chicken. Mm. So my T box game was so terrible yesterday. She like, that. But every par three, mm -hmm. I parred because I was saved some being from some bogeys or from chipping to be right next to the hole and save myself. So I felt like my chipping yesterday was really good. What I, I figured out my little nuances, you know, with chipping and you know, leading edge first and making sure, you know, all of these different things. Ooh, that, that's good. Uh -huh. yeah, oh man, good. I be yeah, I, I, I study yeah. every little shot that I really want to be good at because I hate I hate underperforming. Like you say, it's just something about you know, going out there and, and underperforming. Like, if I have bad shots, that's gone. Yeah. But I don't want to have consistent, consistent. a consistent row of bad shots. Right. It makes zero sense to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Why come out here if I just want to do that? It makes no sense. Yeah. So I just want to, yeah, I like to study. I like to learn. And I feel like the more and more I travel to different courses, the more and more I learn because each course is different. So it yes. teaches you something about your game that you can bring to another course. Your game has to be able to bus travel. Yeah, your, your game, game has, has to, to travel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got to be able to get there to club. Yeah, right. Club. Yeah. Because it may be some courses where that driver is, is great. Yeah. But then you might have to put that driver down yeah. and go to a three wood or a long iron. Three wood down there. There. I have to take my three wood and be wherever I go. Mm. My three wood is going to be right down that thing every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. People used to say, when I drive to work, they just say, go to your three wood. And, <laughs> and if they know me, they're like, just go to your three wood, bro. We done seen it before. And I smack my three wood, give me all my confidence back with my driver. Because it's, it's kind of similar. But the three wood just doesn't have to be so elongated, yeah. so out there. Right. But it's so similar. And you get the same impact, the same joy from a three wood getting yes. crushed. 260, 70, 80 yards, the same as you would get that extra 30 yards you're looking for for your driver. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, three wood, 280. I had my three wood about 260, 270. It is really a travel 280. Oh, yeah. So you're carrying 260. Yeah. Oh, I'm carrying about 260. Wow. Three, three, three wood, with the guy will make every ball from Three wood, with Three wood, with Thank you. Every time. But I just, you get, you want that joy from your driver. You want that driver. Everybody, you everybody wants to see him. Everybody wants to see that ball catapult. Saying they just take the time, bro. This ain't gonna happen overnight. 
So I was like, you know what? You right, screw it. I can't. I don't want you. You with your boys? You want to play good? You want to at least keep pace with the game? Keep pace. Keep pace. You know, pace. everybody has their own mental mm-hmm. clock on tempo. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna do that. So that's when I went, got lessons, started playing. I broke ninety a couple times. Life happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Life happened. Life happened, bro. Man, uh, we're coming close on time now, man. Like I say, I want to just ask you, we've been talking mostly about golf, like I told you I would, but I, I got to ask you a football question sure. before we get out of here. Sure. What's your expectations on this year, man? Yeah. Um, so, it's my contract year. So, <laughs> with any with anybody that understands yeah. when that comes around, you know, it's, it's either perform. Or get left behind because this business doesn't care about you. So um, it's really, um, I'm really gonna try to try to dominate, man. And that's my only expectation uh, is to just try to put on the best overall performance that I can put on, whether it's you know blocking, whether it's receiving, or whatever whatever I have to do ultimately to help us win. Because we have one of the toughest schedules this year. And if we want, if we're going to want to do what we want to do this year, I'm gonna have to play. Okay? really huge part of it. So um, I just look forward to being, you know, consistent this year and just making things happen. Um, you know, if I could if I could if I could just be consistent, I I'll, I'll dominate the overall game in offense. Okay. Y'all got some dogs. We do. We oh, have we have we have some weapons, man. And a lot of people are sleeping on us because you know, you know, Ben's old or our whole line just became young and all of these things, but it's like And then what's the name of your time? Oh, Pouncy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Our old line's young now. You know, we don't have Pouncy. We don't have one of the waiver no more. Um, and it's tough to 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 mold an offensive lineman. Everybody has to be really cool. But the good thing about offensive linemen is nobody's understanding offensive linemen like offensive linemen. They're some of the weirdest, biggest, gentle beasts that we have. They're ferocious, but they're gentle. And only them understand each other. So. It's gonna take a game or two for them dudes to build camaraderie and stuff, and you know those games or two are gonna be leaned upon, you know, a bunch of the skill players, us getting open, us making things happen, and um, you know maybe taking some short passes to the distance, and uh, because our offensive line is young and probably won't give us that much time, you know, Cleveland just got to dig down right along with Miles Garrett, so that doesn't offer you a lot of time to get the ball free, if if you know what I mean. Yeah. So you know we're gonna to try to. I'm gonna just try to go out there and just try to dominate my realm of football because I have I the tight end is his own realm. We have to we have to be blockers, receivers, communicators, and all kinds of things within the offense. Very, very, very significant part of the offense. So, you know, just try to go out there and do my thing. Ready to go. Oh yeah. Man, when I come up there, man, I'm on I'll be I'll be I'll be doing it nine out of ten to get in the picture. So I'm definitely gonna mm-hmm. tell you how that two hundred percent for sure. Man, you got anything you want to close with? No, man, I'm good. I'm gonna pick him up in fantasy, so I'm I would. <laughs> I, was just, I was thinking that too. See, I don't know if you know, we do a fantasy football league here at our store, right? Uh, Introduce eight cigars. Oh, uh-huh. we do cash, we do cigar. Yes, uh, yeah. what's the limit on the cigars? Uh, they gotta be ten dollars up. Ten dollars up, okay. Let's just say you can't have a guy who will use some weak sticks. Oh, no, nah, man, no, nah, no house. <laughs> I'm like, I play fantasy football too. No, I'm what? Like, yeah. Shoot, I like playing with my dogs, man. Hey, bro, you gonna be good? <laughs> I feel good, just like y'all. <laughs> you see the, you see the video of the fantasy that we gonna close. You see the video of uh, Steve Smith talking to one of his teammates. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he was, was talking to DJ Moore. He uh, was talking about. Was he talking about DJ Moore? He was Moore? talking about, he was asking DJ Moore if he should bench him because he didn't know what he was going to play like this year. So he was like. And, but, <laughs> but he was standing, he was standing right behind him when yeah. he was talking to the old buddy like, yeah. hey, you think he's going to be good? Yeah. He's right here. <laughs> oh, I'm like, crazy. I don't care. They want to know if going to win. That's it. The competition never dies. Never so, dies. Yeah. Never. No doubt, man. Man, I really enjoyed this. Man, one. I appreciate y'all. Man. Thanks for having me. Thank you, bro. Feel sure. good, bro. Good to see you. Get y'all out on the clothes, man, for sure. I'm going to take you up on the ball, though. Okay. Come okay. out there. Bro, it looks, man. Ain't number 20 something minutes from here. So we'll, we'll definitely go. Let's do yeah. it. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm Warren Hardy once again, man. We signing off. Jay Reed, VE coming through, stopping through. Talk to y'all later. You can be me, you can beat me to the 19th pole. Oh.
the 19th hole. I'm at the 19th hole, fellowshipping with a few folks. My game was on, so I won by a few strokes. Cognac and a few totes. We gon' talk about our views and let the news post. Whether a hole in one or a triple bogey. Sit down at the round table, get to know me. Black excellence, living holy. Golf carts get driven slowly while we picking stogies. We at the clubhouse for another episode. The shoes I wear when I play, they are retros. I got reach out in Pebble Beach. Find cigars and some leather seats, and you can let us be. You can meet me at the 19th pole, or you can beat me there. Long as you know, you gon' see me there. Golf podcast for us. You can zoom in. You know where we'll be. Won't you tune in? Beat me, you can beat me to the 19th pole. The 19th pole. You can beat me, you can beat me to the 19th pole. The 19th hole.